Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the top 10 router bits that I use in my workshop. Now I'm doing this video more because a lot of people have mentioned through comments on previous videos that they're hesitant to buy full sets. Of course, you can usually get a deal on a full set, but if you really just want to buy your router bits one at a time or two at a time, I thought it'd be worthwhile mentioning which ones that I end up using on a weekly basis. That means you could probably shop for these 10 bits and make up your own set. What I find I have to do often with the most used bits is I'll buy a few of the same bits at a time because I know I'll be going through them. I'll start from number 10, which is probably the least used, and go down to number one, which is my favorite and most used bit. So with that, let's get to it. Number 10, half inch shank round over bit. Now the half inch shank round over bit is something that I use when I change out the collet on my router. I've got a DeWalt router that can handle quarter inch shanks and half inch shanks. It is a single speed fixed base router so I don't have to worry about variable speed and it'll run these bits reliably. If I'm going to do a lot of work on hardwoods like red oak for example, a half inch shank is preferable over the quarter inch variety because the greater mass of this bit will dissipate the heat a lot better and reduce the chatter or vibration that you get. You'll also find that you'll get less deflection as a result of that. Number nine, long straight cutting bit with the half inch shank. Now this is something again that I will use for the same reason I use the half inch shank for the roundover bit is if I'm doing a lot of work where I need to hog out material a little further down and I need to get deeper, the longer shank and the thicker shank is the way to go. It will again handle the heat problems a lot better and will give you a lot less chatter and vibration as you're working. I should mention that this is a carbide bit, so this can handle the abuse a little bit better than the quarter inch variety. And for that reason, when I'm going to a straight bit or I'm doing some edge work, this is the bit that I like to use. Number eight, my half inch shank T-slot cutter. Again, I usually use the half inch shank with T-slots nowadays because those are particularly hot jobs as I call them. With the quarter inch variety of the T-slot cutter, I usually have to do it in two passes. I use a straight bit first and then I follow up with the T-slot, which works just fine. But if you don't want to have to do too many extra passes, using the half inch shank and getting, again, a carbide bit is the way to go. Number seven, my double bearing dovetail bit. This is the bit that I use when I am cutting dovetails using my General Tools dovetail jig. It is a bit that I've somewhat customized for myself. It came originally with one bearing that burnt out and fell off of the, the bit. The bit itself was still very sharp and did a great job, so I bought two more bearings, and as I found out, it performs a lot better with two bearings rather than one. Number six, I don't know what you call this bit, but I like to call it the bell bit. It's typically a profile bit that you would use if you're trying to do some molding. I actually don't use this for any decorative purposes at all. What I usually use this bit for is cutting negatives into the edge of a piece of wood so that I can create a natural handle. So for example, if I'm making a single drawer cabinet, you can create a natural handle that acts as a drawer pull, such as what I've done with my nightstands that I built recently. Hardware on the face of a piece of furniture like that ruined the look of the nightstand, so I decided to cut channels at the bottom back edge of the drawer, and that works tremendously well as a natural drawer pull. Number five, my quarter inch flush trim bit. This is a top bearing bit. I also have the bottom bearing variety of this type of cutter. As with a typical flush trim bit, this one can be used for cutting out patterns. I sometimes use a bottom bearing bit. As I got into building cabinets, these trim bits were probably the first type of bits that I used when working with things like veneer. If you're trimming off veneer on an edge, these are invaluable to have. You're going to use them. But I also use them to copy patterns and shapes. So if I'm cutting patterns and I'm trying to duplicate a shape, I will cut the shapes out roughly on the bandsaw. Then I'll come over with whatever I've used as a template 
and follow the pattern using one of these bits. Number four, the rabbit or rebate or slot cutter bit, however you want to call it. This is a highly versatile bit. I've used it uh, installed in the router table for cutting out channels and grooves. I think I've got three different sizes of this bit. And again, this is the quarter inch variety. I'll use this bit quite often if I'm cutting splines. I might upgrade at some point to a half inch shank because you do get a little bit of kick when you're using this bit. So you wanna be careful, but overall, a very valuable bit to have in your shop. Number three, the all purpose round over bit. Now I showed you the half inch shank variety of the round over bit. Here's the quarter inch shank. The quarter inch shank is one I end up using kind of as a default on a particular project. I might be doing multiple passes with different bits. I won't change out the collette. I will go to my quarter inch round over and this one has been around for many years. Again, probably almost a decade and it's still going strong. It's still nice and sharp and I have not burnt out the bearing on it. Number two, the chamfer bit. This is the quarter inch variety of chamfer bit. I think I have a half inch shank as well somewhere. And like the round over, it is used for finishing work, getting quick chamfer on a piece of furniture, say a chair or a bench, or even a table leg. These come in really handy. I fully recommend having one of these. Of course, you can get a chamfer the old fashioned way using a chisel or a hand plane. Where the round over is not always desirable, the chamfer is often the way to go if you're trying to break that edge and give it a nice sort of multi-dimensional look to your furniture. And number one, last but not least, is my favorite. This is a spiral down cut bit. I also have the up cut variety of this bit. This down cut bit is the one that I like to use the most because it leaves a nice clean finish on the top of the cut and at the bottom it just hogs out the wood really nice. Again, I try to buy only carbide bits nowadays because the ordinary cheaper bits don't last very long. They actually end up either breaking or burning up. This one has been around in my shop for probably about a couple years now and I have yet to have to sharpen it. It is still razor sharp and it's still doing its job just fine. I love using this for a variety of purposes, not the least of which is if I'm doing a box joint, as in my box joint video, I will use a bit like this to hog out the material and I get a much cleaner cut. Uh, I have a longer version of this that came with my general tools mortise and tenon jig. What happens is you'll use this on several passes and this is not unlike uh, the bits that you'll see on CNC machines where a CNC machine will go through in several passes and hog out the wood gradually rather than trying to take big bites. One thing I'm going to do in the future is buy the half inch variety of this again, but this is by far my favorite and probably the most used bit in my workshop. So there you have it, the top 10 router bits. If you were hesitant to buy a set of router bits, this video should help you figure out which ones to buy, and which ones will be the most useful to you and the projects that you're working on. I have quite a few other bits that I have in the shop, some really odd ones, a lot of profile bits that came with sets that I bought. Really, I don't use most of them. The 10 that I've shown you today are absolutely the most used and the ones that I go to most often. Don't forget to check out the new t-shirt designs that are in the drawer down below here. You can also click in the link in the description below to find my t-shirt shop and go check out the new designs. They're absolutely worth buying. I'm waiting for my order to come in right now, so you should see me wearing them very soon. If you want to help this channel, head on over to my donation page right over here. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There are a couple more videos on this side you can watch. Until next time, thanks for watching and have a great day.